In this week's video, we'll review the long-term bullish case relative to the long-term bearish case. To view the video in full screen mode, use this icon in the lower right-hand corner of your video player. To improve the clarity of the charts, use this icon in the lower right-hand corner of your video player. We'll let the charts do the talking, which will allow us to move very, very quickly this week. You can use the pause button in the lower left-hand corner of your video player if needed. You may remember last week we used a relatively simple approach to examine the health of markets on multiple time frames. In this exercise, our fastest moving average, blue, is the 30-day moving average. And we go all the way out to the 275 day moving average here. This is the look, the low probability look that we want to avoid. You can see the present day as of January 20th really doesn't look anything like these concerning looks in 2000 and 2007. Similar situation for the Dow. Remember last week we said the 30 day moving average is way too fast for our time frame, but we did include it to show how strong the trends are in the present day. You can see the 30-day moving average hasn't even rolled over yet as of January 20th. We also still have a constructive look January 20th for the NYSE composite. You can see the present day here with blue on top and positive slopes on all of the moving averages. It really doesn't look anything like blue on the bottom and negative slopes for all the moving averages. Healthy markets tend to have broad participation. We can go all the way out to the Vanguard total stock market ETF as of January 20th using the same moving averages. We still have a constructive look from a risk reward perspective. If we use the standard 50 day in blue and 200 day in red with the blue helping us with intermediate term trends and the 200 day in red helping us with longer term trends, we can compare the present day to bearish turns, they're on the top here, and bullish turns at major turning points. If we understand what the market looks like at major turning points, it gives us some insight into the risk reward profile in the present day. If we look at the same 50 day and 200 day as of January 20th, we can see there's no question that the present day looks more like a bullish turn than a bearish turn. Our ratio of financial stocks to the S&P 500, this is the six year base that we covered a few weeks ago. We're still holding the constructive breakout. We have somewhat of a retest look here, but this is still a bullish breakout. The longer we stay above the orange box, the more important it becomes for the performance of financials relative to the S&P 500. Just a quick refresher on the long-term consolidation box here in 1992 out to 1995. The longer a market goes sideways, in this case it was 830 calendar days, the bigger the move that we can expect to get if we do indeed get a successful bullish breakout. In this case, the stock market after breaking out of the box went up over 41%. This was the chart that we used to compare the two periods back on November 23rd. We can still look at the same chart because it's still constructive. The close on January 20th was somewhere in the neighborhood of 2269. So we're well above the orange box. And we've consolidated in this case even longer than the previous consolidation. It was 830 days. This was over 1000 calendar days. We zoom out a little bit to a historical example. It puts this box into some context. Harder markets are typically followed by easier markets. Harder markets are typically followed by easier markets. You may remember back in December, we covered a relatively rare signal, S&P 500. This is monthly MACD here. All things being equal, the probability of good things happening is higher when black is above red. All things being equal, the probability of good things happening is higher when black is above red. This is the S&P 500 here, and in this case, good things did happen. Sometimes it's very, very difficult to focus on the longer term when you're too close to the markets focusing on day-to-day -day volatility. These charts, you can see, haven't changed much. This is our MACD here. We still have the constructive look. 
as of January 20th for the S&P 500 index. The same can be said for the Dow, and you can also see a long-term consolidation box. We also have a constructive look in place with black above red on the monthly MACD for the broad NYSE composite monthly. The more stocks that participate in the move, typically the healthier the market. This is the total stock market VTI ETF, black above red on the monthly MACD as of January 20th, 2017. And all things being equal, we would prefer to have more countries around the globe participate in a bullish move. That increases our confidence about what's happening in the United States. This is the Vanguard Total World Stock ETF. So this is just global stocks. It includes U.S. stocks and foreign stocks. Here's a long-term consolidation box here that dates all the way back to 2013. And you can see we recently broke out of the box. The longer we stay above the box, the more relevant it is. And we do have the constructive turn with black above red on the monthly MACD. It also should be noted that when black is above red here, all of the charts that we just reviewed really don't look like the concerning periods where the probability of bad things happening increases. That's when black falls below red, bad things happen. Black falls below red, the probability of bad things happening is higher. So when we see something that supports the bullish case, it also takes credibility away from the bearish case. If we can apply monthly MACD to our risk-on, risk-off ratios, this is monthly stocks, SPY, relative to TLT bonds. We have black above red, the constructive look. And there's no question that this look here looks more like the bullish turn in 2009 for the same ratio. It doesn't really look anything like the bearish turn here for this ratio in calendar year 2007. We've also covered similarities in the past few months to the early 80s, just updating. Here's a monthly MACD look here. There's a consolidation period. You get black above red on the chart from 1983 to 1985. A similar look here in the present day. In both cases, we have long-term consolidation on the monthly chart, black above red. Long-term consolidation, black above red. And the third similarity is a bullish breakout from the consolidation box. A bullish breakout from the consolidation box. All of these charts, they can't predict the future. They just help us with probabilities. The probability of good things happening relative to the probability of bad things happening. Clients and regular viewers may remember the this signal has only occurred 10 other times in the past 35 years video we put together back on August 19th of 2016. How does this rare signal look today? This is the same 30, 40, and 50 week moving averages for illustrative purposes only moving averages that we covered in that video. You can see we have a full bore bullish look and a constructive look on January 20th, 2017. And if we filter noisy price off of this weekly chart, you can see this is constructive. We don't have a look that looks like it's about to roll over or we're about to lose this long-term full bore bullish look. This is what we want to avoid. This is a full bore bearish look here. This is early in calendar year 2008. And you can see in this case, we already have a full bore bearish look with blue on the bottom, the fastest moving average and the slopes of all of them are down. This look here really doesn't look anything like the present day, nor does the present day look anything like the early stages of the dot-com bust. If we apply the same weekly moving average to the Dow Jones Industrial Average as of January 20th, we have a constructive look. And similar to the S&P 500, the weekly look that we have in the present day really doesn't look anything like this concerning low probability look for the Dow early in calendar year 2008. We have no idea how the rest of calendar year 2017 will look, and nor does anyone else for that matter. But one thing we do know is typically when you get these bullish turns on these weekly moving averages that we just covered, 
good things happen for a long period of time. Conversely, when we get a low probability look, bad things tend to happen for a long period of time. These signals here that are on the screen, the S&P 500 rallied. The average rally lasted 108 weeks and the median rally lasted 102 weeks. A quick update on our long-term Bollinger bandwidth analysis, 1984, 1995, 2005, and 2016. How does this chart look in the present day? If we look at this blue line, it still aligns with the analysis that we did in the past. This is the same chart as of January 20th. We have the turn here, and it's also turning up from low levels as the S&P 500 breaks out of a long-term consolidation box. Have to keep in mind that we still have that rare outside year that last occurred in 1982. And we also had the DeMarc analysis that showed us some similarities to 1982 from a secular trend perspective. If you didn't live through the period or you weren't in the markets in 1982, you might think that everything looked wonderful in 1982. That's not the case. If you Google this title here or this title here, you can find a review of the year 1982. Like any year in the stock market, it wasn't easy and a lot of bad things were happening as the market was turning. And from this point here was the starting point of an 18 year secular rise for stocks. 50 day, 200 day, 1983, 1985, 50 day, 200 day, 2014, all the way up to January 20th, 2017. The concept of consolidations and bullish breakouts can be applied to risk on risk off ratios. This is stocks SPY relative to a diversified basket of bonds or AGG in the ETF world. The longer we go sideways, the bigger the move we can expect to get after we get a successful breakout or bearish breakdown. In this case, we had a bullish breakout early in calendar year 2013 and stocks outperformed bonds for two and a half years. We have a similar situation in the present day. The present day looks similar to early 2013. After this breakout, stocks outperformed bonds for two and a half years. In the present day, in 2017, on January 20th, what happens here is to be determined, but the look that we have in hand now, the hard evidence that we have, that we can measure and see, still looks constructive. We've covered this in the past, but sometimes we forget that the market was very, very confused. The market had it wrong in early February, and we had two instances where the futures overnight went limit down after Brexit, and after the US election. In both cases, this is maximum fear. It can be a good sign when you see something like futures plunge only to recover and go higher. Often that happens at the early stages of a new long-term trend. And as long as these long-term breakouts hold, we want to make sure that we keep a long-term focus from 1982 here to 1987, the stock market, S&P 500, gained over 200% in five years. Five years puts day-to-day -day volatility and five trading sessions into the proper perspective for our time frame. The longer you're frustrated, the higher the probability that good things will happen. Harder markets are followed by easier markets. In this case, after the frustration, good things happen for six years years and the S&P 500 gained over 200%. Remember in mid-December, we looked at monthly ADX to try to get some idea. How does the present day compare to October 1987? And if you watched that video, you know the conclusion was the present day here in 2016 with black ADX hovering near 18 really didn't look anything like the setup in 1987 nor did it look anything like the bearish setup that occurred prior to the year 2000. Instead, the present day looks a lot like the constructive period in 1982 and the excellent entry point from a risk reward perspective 
1994. What can we learn from black ADX today? In mid-December, the black line was still falling. Remember, the single best signal with ADX comes after black, here's black, falls below both red and green. Black, red, and green. When black rallies from below both red and green, it shows the market is waking up from a lull. We're starting to see if you zero in on this, this has a positive slope now. This looks quite a bit different than the slope of the same line on December 15th of last year. Therefore, ADX still is telling us basically the same things that it told us in the December 15th analysis. Another quick reminder to make sure our focus is not on day-to-day -day swings. This is the bullish breakout on the S&P 500 in 2013. This is our full bore bullish look with the 30, 40, and 50. This rally carries into the spring of 2015. This looks easy here. It's far from easy if you stay too close to the market. The rally from 2013 into 2015, the entire time we have a full bore bullish look. But this easy period is 600 trading days. And during the easy period, the S&P 500 was red for 265 trading days. We need to make sure that we're not getting too close to the market and the day-to-day -day swings or else it's going to be very, very difficult to use the market model properly. Another gentle reminder, there's no market law that says a new all-time high tells us anything about the market's risk-reward profile. When you get into a secular trend, you can literally make new all-time highs over and over and over again for years. This is 1982. This is the year 2000 here or late in 1999. It's not a prediction here. We're not saying this is going to happen, but it can happen. And if you get too focused on new all-time highs, then you're not really focusing on the right things, at least under our system. The key to success, this looks easy, full bore bullish look, is captured in the Jesse Livermore quote. It was never my thinking that made big money for me. It was always my sitting. Got that? My sitting tight. Clients know that we've been doing a lot of sitting recently, and we will continue to sit as long as the math, the market, and the model allow. How do we track all of this and convert it into a usable and actionable format in a reasonable amount of time? The sub-models we answer binary questions, some of them manually done, some of them programmed in Excel, and we also enter in unbiased and hard data. The submodels allow us to get a handle on the market's current profile, and the master CCM market model then looks at the current profile, compares it to past profiles, and recommends a prudent allocation between risk assets such as stocks and conservative assets such as bonds. Conservative assets can consist of cash, bonds, currencies, or any number of investment options. If you'd like to learn more about the market model or our money management services, you can visit our website, follow along on Twitter, Facebook, read our blog, short takes, or watch past videos on the Shivako Capital Channel on YouTube. The material in this video has no regard to the specific investment objectives, financial situation, or particular needs of any viewer. This video is presented solely for informational purposes and is not to be construed as a solicitation or offer to buy or sell any security or any related financial instruments, nor should any of the content be taken as investment advice. Any opinions expressed in this video are subject to change without notice, and Shivako Capital Management, LLC, or CCM, is not under any obligation to update or keep current the information contained herein. CCM and its respective officers and associates or clients may have an interest in the securities or derivatives of any entities referred to in this material. CCM accepts no liability whatsoever for any loss or damage of any kind arising out of the use of all or any part of this material. We recommend that you consult with a licensed and qualified professional 
before making any investment decision.